what a corporation is has just been so diluted by governments anyways that um it's really hard to actually make a free market argument for corporations in their current state mm. you know but if a corporation like you know just a regular corporation that we have now if on a purely free market as long as it's profitable we should have it because you know they're providing a valuable service obviously because they're making money um not that, necessarily i i would i would oh, take issue you, with that what, a little bit yeah yeah what do you mean by that well, What's your counter argument? Okay, um, so so you're saying that corporations, um, if they make money, then then that's great. Then then they deserve to exist, and they're if they make money, then they provide value to people, basically, right? But that's yeah. not necessarily the case because so many large corporations in the in the United States today, they only make money or a large portion of their profits are just because they're so in bed and so close with government. If you know what I mean? Like like they they get no, so yeah, much that's, kickbacks that's from I'm taxes saying. and stuff and that that is not because they're providing any extra value to the regular people. It's just because they <laughs> they they've got connections to the government which controls all the money. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the actual definition of what a corporation is has been so diluted uh by government regulation and just, you know, cronyism and things like that. Uh, that it's hard to make a free market argument for corporations as they exist today. What I'm saying is on a purely free market uh, with with no government intervention or possibly you know no government at all, it does you know it doesn't really matter. Um, on a purely free market, anything, any business, any enterprise that is making a profit is ha- like is necessarily providing value to society because on a free market, they wouldn't be making money if people didn't want what they were selling because the only way they can make it the only way they can make profit is mm. by getting people to buy their products mm. do you do you think that the like sometimes with okay I, I'll, I'll give a specific example um like with the energy industry we've got these oil corporations which make tons and tons of money um by selling oil and gasoline uh, oil is used to make plastics. It's ridiculous. Like it, 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 it basically runs a large part of the economy. So they make a lot of money off of that. But do you, like the only reason people still buy gasoline, or some people still buy gasoline, is because it's the only option out there. We don't, we don't have a system yet where um, electric cars are really supported in the overall economy. We don't have a system where um, hybrid cars, cars are really supported. So these these oil corporations have basically um, gotten so intertwined with the government and regulators, where they, they they are given a de facto monopoly in the energy industry, right? And and like it's it's not really a free market. So you can, you can't say that they're providing value to people in the free market because people are buying it. Well, if it's the only thing to buy, then people don't really have a choice, right? Right, yeah, but I would, I would blame that on government again, though. Um, I could, I could okay, talk yeah. about the history of oil corporations all day. You know, like, the closest thing to a free market the United States ever had was in the 19th century, uh, after the Civil War, it, it, the Gilded Age. And um, we had Standard Oil, it was. It ended up being. It ended up being a monopoly, um, but that's because uh, there's just a sheer lack of physical space in, on the earth to have multiple competing oil companies. Because there's only so much oil, right? And then what happened there was that um, they actually, uh, Rockefeller actually, um, he actually provided a lot of value to society. Uh, he actually he helped the environment a lot. Uh, because of his enterprises, and yeah. he decreased the price of oil constantly. Now, what happened was that's the, how he the gained his monopoly, right? He yeah, was so low. Yeah, the government, the government then broke up the monopoly. They split it into you know the the baby corporations, which were then most of those were completely bought up by foreign oil companies, and these were companies like Shell, uh, British Petroleum, uh, you know, companies like that, and so the U.S. government. By breaking up Standard Oil monopoly, they basically set the stage for what we have today, where we have like three or four major oil companies, mm. and those th- and those few those handful of companies, 
they're currently controlled by OPEC, which is, you know, a handful of really rich Middle Eastern states that are rich in oil production. And um, so the whole, the whole system around oil production that we have today is completely a product of government. And the reason why it isn't going away is that governments are so invested in it. You know, in the United States, mm. we rely on the gas tax to build our roads and things like that. So if, mm. if the government allowed private enterprise to develop an alternative to um, a fuel-driven engine, they would lose all funding. Uh, they would lose all funding from their gas tax, and then, you know, apparently there would be no roads because nobody else other than government knows how to build a road. Um, yeah, how do you do that anyway? But, you know, but, you lay down a mat or something. <laughs> so gov governments created the situation we have today with oil and energy in general, and they profit too much from keeping it around, so they're not going to let any alternative energy hit the market unless it unless they approve it, and they would only approve it if it doesn't threaten the oil industry. You know, that's why we have things like what happened with Solyndra, where the the United States federal government put like two billion dollars, I think, gave like two billion dollars in subsidies to Solyndra, which was this solar panel manufacturing company. Um, but you know, solar panels aren't the most efficient, you know, method of creating alternative energy. Mm -hmm. Wasn't as successful as the federal government thought it would be. Solyndra tanked. They went bankrupt. Taxpayers were out two billion dollars, and it did nothing in the way of green energy. Um, yeah. So yeah, I would. <laughs> you're I you're would more say... likely to to create a solution to the energy problem by deregulating. Um, doing okay hold on like i hate when people bring up the word deregulation because a lot of so-called republicans don't even know what <laughs> they mean when they talk about deregulation right. when they talk about deregulation what they really mean is they want to deregulate uh the the largest corporations who already have a lot of power and give them even more permissions to basically run rampant over um over the population but like if we had real deregulation, we would see more startups being being able to be formed. Um, there would be less legal overhead for these companies to get started. There would be less concerns about which laws they're breaking and trying to get started in their business and such. So, yeah, it's it's if we if we just deregulated did do, did real deregulation, then we'd probably see some actual progress get made in the energy industry. Yeah, I would I would be willing to go as far as to argue that if the United States government had never broken up the standard oil monopoly, that we would already be transitioning to an alternative form of energy as a replacement to oil. Um, you know, because I'm I'm not going to get into like economics, like in-depth economic uh, argument about Standard Oil or anything like that. Uh -huh. But breaking it up into all these smaller companies uh, made it much easier for the foreign companies to buy them out, which made them bigger. Mm. And then, um, you know, then obviously governments took over the oil companies completely. So, so yeah, if we had never broken up Standard Oil. I think somebody would have came up with some kind of uh, alternative form of energy that would have replaced oil by now, and we would at least be transitioning to it already. And just as a side note, I think it's a pretty cool fact. Uh, I read somewhere that if Standard Oil was never broken up, it would be worth around $1 trillion today. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my... That's my rant about free markets and yeah. government intervention in the energy industry. <laughs> <laughs>